Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Today, we're going to start our um, new chapter, guys. It's the last chapter. And uh, we're going to start with area between the curves intro. Uh, remember, there's a three-day weekend coming up. Don't drink and derive. <laughs> there it is. Alright, so, uh, warm up. Find the area under the curve y equals x squared plus 2 between x equals 1 and x equals 4. So, uh, we have a parabola that's facing what? Up. Facing up. Moved where? Up to. Up to. So, we're going to go 1, 2, and we're going to draw a parabola that's facing up. And it's asking me to find the area between which two numbers? Okay, so uh, we're going to kind of put it in here. X equals 1 and X equals 4. So it's asking you to find this area right here. If you have any pencil, you can shade it in. Before calculus, that would have been impossible to find it. But with calculus, we can find that. Um, now, this is y equals x squared plus 2 where? So, go ahead and turn to your partner. What would be the setup to find the area under this curve between 1 and 4? Go ahead and turn to your partner. What do you think? What do you think? Do you know? <laughs> okay, coming back. Five, four, three. So raise your hand. Who can tell me the setup? <clears throat> the setup for this one. Katrina. So the integral from 1 to 4 of the function y, no, the function x squared plus 2. So the interval from 1 to 4 of the function x squared plus 2 in terms of or with respect to x. That's it. We good? How many of you uh, had that or talked about that with your partner? Because remember, what does an integral find? area under the curve. And we want to find the area under the curve between 1 and 4. So here it is. And uh, once that is set up, uh, can we do it? Of course we can do it with a calculator. Can we do it without a calculator? Yes. Yes, of course. Guys, what's the antiderivative of x squared? What's the antiderivative of plus 2? So now we, we turn that into a bracket because we're, we already took the antiderivative, that this is the antiderivative, so don't put a, an integral symbol again. And then, uh, but it is between one and four. Fundamental theorem of calculus tells me that I can do well with these values. Plug it in and subtract. Plug it in and subtract, so. You plug it in, six, four cubed would be 64. Plus eight. Minus, you plug in a one, one third plus two. If this was the AP exam and this was FRQ, you could box this answer and then you gotta go to the next one. Save yourself some time. Okay? As long as you already did the plugging in and all you have is a, uh, something that needs to be simplified, but you already did all the calculus and trig and it's just numbers that need to be added or subtracted or multiplied, you're good. You can box that as the end. But if we just keep going, so here this would be uh, 63 over 3, and then 8 minus 2 would be 6. What is that? 21 plus 6 is 27. 
We good? So, can we do area under the curve already? Yes. But notice the, uh, the title. Area between curves. Okay? So, let's take a look. Uh, example one. Find the area bounded by the graphs. We have this one, we have this one, and then these are the limits. So let's, the first thing I want you to do is to be able to just make a sketch. So let's do a sketch real quick. Uh, y equals x squared plus two. Let's try it a little flatter so we have more space. So isn't that the same curve we did on the warm-up? Yes. Is that the same curve we did on the warm-up? Yes. Yeah, buddy. But then, uh, now it's saying between that curve and y equals 2x. y equals 2x. So uh, what does that look like? Show me with your uh, arms. y equals 2x. Okay, yep. So we, we see something uh, going diagonally. Uh, so starting here, I'm not really going to follow the slope, I'm just trying to uh, draw a sketch. So I know it's a diagonal line somewhere like that. Okay, and I am finding the area between where and where? One, four. One. And four. the area between the curves or bounded by this, this, and then these guys. So in other words, I'm looking for this. Now, <clears throat> before, I, before we, we do the setup for that one, let me, let me tell you something. I don't want you to lose sight of the following, okay? Check it out. What you're finding here really are areas of rectangles. Areas of what? Rectangles. So let's think about that because it's going to help us later on in this chapter. Um, what do you mean, Mr. Lara, rectangles? Remember there is like an infinite amount of rectangles here? Go ahead and draw one in the warm up. Draw yourself a, a very thin rectangle. <clears throat> now, what's the area of that rectangle? Well, isn't it this length? I mean, the rectangle would be length and width. Yeah? Length and width. So what is the length of this rectangle? Well, it would be the top minus the bottom. So which is y, uh, x squared plus 2 minus what? Minus what? What's at the bottom, guys? What number? Think Justin Bieber's talent level. Yeah, there you go. They know. They know, Ms. Cogren. They know. So, yeah, x squared plus 2 minus 0, which is x squared plus 2. So, here's the length of the rectangle. And then, what's the width? Guys, don't leave me hanging. Don't, don't embarrass me in front of my YouTube followers. What's the width? It's a change in what? Change in x. Change in x, therefore we call it the x. So we have length times width. There it is, length times width. And then calculus finds me the area of all the little, all the thick rectangles from one to four and it adds them up. And that's what we have. Good? We talked about that, but do you remember that a little more? Yeah. So, <clears throat> on this one again, go ahead and draw yourself a thin rectangle. See, my calculus teacher never, ne ne never taught me that. So, I want you to think about it that way, or why? The why, what's happening, what's going on? So again, here I have a rectangle. 
a very thin rectangle. And so here we go. Uh, what do you think the difference is going to be in the setup? Turn to your partner, please. What is the difference? How, do you, how is the difference between this one and the warm up? <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> 12, yes. The answer is 12. We good? All right. Guys, you gotta say it with confidence. I mean, even if you're wrong, if you say it with enough confidence, people will believe you. So, um, yeah. How do you think I got this job? <laughs> Can we edit that out of the uh, YouTube video? See? Right. So for that, I don't know. Alright. So we've come then to a, uh, we, we see the main idea then. Area between curves. We've done that. Uh, we've done our first area between the curves, and we can see it's no big deal. If we have two functions, if we have a function on the top, we're going to call it f of x. And we have a function at the bottom, we'll call it g of x. And we go from A to B. And I want to get that area. Well, then it's clear that the setup for it is going to be, I'll let you uh, copy that down. But the main formula for the area between the curves, the, there is a formula for this, but we don't really need the formula as we understand how to do it. It's the what? How do I set it up? Integral? From A to B. From A to B? Of f of x minus g of x dx. That's right. f of x minus g of x and then dx. So that's what we're going to be practicing today uh, and then being confident with it. Example two. Find the area uh, bounded by these uh, curves. Okay. What is uh, what does y equals x cubed plus two look like? Uh huh. And uh, also. Okay. So I moved up how much? Two. So we're gonna work for one, two. So there's that one. Uh, y equals negative x. Go ahead and draw that real quick on your uh, graph. Y equals negative x. between 0 and 1. What do you think the setup for this will be? So write it down, and then if you have the longer hair, check with your partner. Show your partner the answer. So first, everybody writes it down, and if you have the longer hair, you show your partner your answer, and let's see if uh, they agree. That's right. Uh, plus x because it's a minus. Minus what? Oh, negative. negative x, right? And that that made the uh, that made it a plus. And then uh, and then what outside? Dx. Yeah. Dx. Raise your hand if that's your setup there. Perfect. Okay. Uh, you know what? Go ahead and find it. Go ahead and find it.
check with your partner, please. Check with your partner. <clears throat> Andy, what did we end up getting? 11 over 4. Raise your hand if that's what we have, 11 over 4. No? Uh-oh. What happened? region bounded by the graphs F and G. Oh, what's different about this one than the other ones? I don't give you what? Yeah, I don't give you the intervals, huh? Uh, for the other ones I did, but on this one I didn't. And the truth is, for a lot of them, they will not tell you from where to where. But they are telling you, find the area bounded by these graphs, meaning they probably intersect, and they, they, they probably make a closed region. And so we just gotta find what those intersections um, are. Sometimes they're algebraically very easy to find, sometimes you might have to use your calculator to see where they intersect. Well, let's take a look at this one. So two minus x squared. What does that look like, two minus x squared? Parabola. More? Uh, Facing down. Uh, I guess moved up to. So let's do it. So a parabola that's moved up to. But it is facing down. And then y equals x. Told you did, did they need to give you an interval? No, because all they said is find the area that's bounded by these graphs. Well, what does that mean bounded? Enclosed. And we can see that it is enclosed. Right here. So we are trying to find this area right here. Well, Yes, obviously, what do I need to find first? Yeah, because I, I, I know it's somewhere around here. I just don't know what that x value is. And I know there's another one here. I just don't know what that, what that x value is. Okay, so I'm going to need to uh, uh, get these two and set them equal to each other. It's a quadratic. Okay, I can handle quadratics. Uh, set it equal to zero. Bring that to the other side. I get x squared plus x minus two. Look at that. It even factors. Ah, oh, Mr. Lar. It even factors. What does it factor to? X minus. One and which then gives me two answers x equals one, x equals negative two. Ah, so now I know it goes from negative two to positive one. Can we do the setup now? Absolutely. Go ahead and write it. So 
the area is equal to, write it like this, area equals to, and then do the setup. Wait, Mr. Lara, what? 
If this is absolute value of 2x, doesn't that give me two functions? 2x and y equals negative 2x, put together. And then at the top I have y equals x plus 3. What area am I trying to find? The one inside. The one inside. So it's right in shaded. I don't know about you, but all this seems very shady. You gonna talk bad about me? You gonna throw shade? No. Uh, no? <laughs> Alright, so there's a problem, guys, with this. A problem we haven't encountered when we're trying to find the area. Turn to your partner. What's different about this one and the ones that we have done? What's different about this one and the ones that we have done? Maybe the title of the example gives it away. Whoops. Turn to your partner. Okay, so who can tell me what's different about this one when I try to do the setup than the ones that we have done? What's different about this one? Jessica. Okay, yeah, there is three functions, uh, not two. That's true. So how does that change my setup, or what? Why is my setup going to be any different? Yes, Katrina. Give us the triangle. Okay, so you're thinking of finding the area just using a the, like the triangle. Formula? Well, that, that's, um, we might be able to do that. We might be able to. Um, but if we stick with calculus, any, do you see any problems with what we've done? Do you see any problems with what we've done? Jessica? Um, Ah, there it is. It's weird to subtract two functions. Yep, and we'll get to that. Let, let's find, before we get to the, uh, before we answer that question, let's find the intervals. Where do these two, uh, where do these functions meet? What, what is that x value? Well, if I want to find that x value, i got to say which functions equal? x plus 3 and? Negative 2x. So x plus 3 equals negative 2x. Use your super algebra powers, and what does x equal? Negative 1. Okay, so I know that this is a negative 1. We do the same thing for the other one. Okay, coin, what two functions do I set equal to each other? Okay, we use our super mental powers and we get x is equal to positive 3. Okay, so at least I know that. Here's the problem when I'm uh, doing this. Um, it's area on the top, right? Minus, minus function on the top minus function at the bottom. Which is fine here, it's fine here, it's fine here, but then it changes, doesn't it? Uh, the, the, the function here is different than this function over here. Which means then, very simple, how do I fix it? How do I, what's my setup gonna be? How many intervals? Two. Okay, there you go, it's two intervals. So it's gonna be the interval from where to where, let's starting on the left. Negative one, zero. Negative one to zero, yeah. And then top minus bottom. Well, the top will always be what? X plus 3. X plus 3. Minus, but for this little piece, what's the bottom function? Negative 2x. Dx. 
plus, and now we just do the uh, second part. Integral. Jasmine, from where to where? And uh, what function minus what function, Jasmine? Um, x plus 3 minus 2x. x plus 3 minus 2x. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. There is the difference. We good? So, very easy. We just fix it. We put two different intervals because we have two different bottom functions. Okay? And then we just uh, solve each one. We're going to save a little time here. So, this is negative 1 to 0 x plus 2x gives me uh, 3x and then here x minus 2x gives me negative x plus 3 we won't finish it but give me give me at least the uh, Give me the antiderivatives, please. Give me, put the antiderivatives there. Let's get some good antiderivative practice. each of these uh, for one two and three and number two I'm gonna give you the picture but one and three give me the setup number two I'll just tell you what it looks like okay so go ahead and start with number one When you get to number two, there's the picture for it. But we're just doing the get to the interval setup. And then go to the next one.
Were you able to do the problems? I hope so. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye-bye.